In this video, we look at an example of applying the order statistics to solve some problem. Here is the problem. If capital X1, capital X2, and capital X3 are independent random variables that are uniformly distributed over the interval 0, 1, computes the probability that the largest of the three is greater than the sum of the other two. For comparison, we will use two different approaches to solve this problem. In the first approach, we will use the order statistics. In the second approach, we will use the joint probability density function directly. In the language of order statistics, the largest value among three random variables is denoted as capital X sub parentheses three. So our goal could be written as capital X sub parentheses three is greater than the sum of the other two order statistics. And what we're gonna do is gonna be looking for the probability of this event. Hence, to find the probability, we need to integrate the joint density function of the order statistics over the proper region. We begin with recalling a few basic facts. Firstly, the probability density function for the random variable uniformly distributed over the interval zero to one is simply given by the constant function one over this interval. As a consequence, the joint density function of the order statistics of three random variables is given simply by three factorial when x1, 2, and 3 satisfy this condition over here and 0 elsewhere. To find the probability, we need to integrate the joint density function over the proper region. So let's write up the conditions characterizing the region carefully. Clearly, the first condition is x sub 3 is greater than x sub 1 plus x sub 2. On the other hand, we only need to integrate over the region in which the function is not zero. Therefore, we will have to specify the conditions for this requirement. Hence, we observe that the second condition is x sub 1 plus x sub 2 must be less than 1. Otherwise, your x sub 3 would be greater than 1. And in that place, your joint density function would be 0. So we'd better have the sum of x1 and x2 to be less than 1. For the sake of setting up the integral limit, it would also be helpful to recognize that this condition is equivalent to x sub 2 less than 1 minus x sub 1. We also need x sub 1 to be less than x sub 2. And as a consequence of the second and the third condition, we'd better have x sub 1 less than 1 half and greater than 0. These four conditions specify our integration region. Hence, we can proceed to compute the probability of the largest value being greater than the sum of the other two. It would simply be the integral of the joint density function over the given region. If we choose to integrate in the order from x sub 3 to x sub 2 to x sub 1, then the integration limit is going to be given by x sub 1 plus x sub 2 to 1, x sub 1 to 1 minus x sub 1, and 0 to 1 half. 
this is a simple integral and through computation we end up with one half which means the probability for the largest value among these three random variables to be greater than the sum of the other two is just one half, 50%. And we are done with this problem with the first approach. In the second approach, we will use the joint density function of the random variables, capital X1, 2, and 3 themselves without referring to the order statistics. The key observation here is that the targeted event can be decomposed into three mutually exclusive events, namely capital X1 greater than the sum of capital X2 and three, capital X2 greater than capital X one plus capital X three and capital X three greater than the sum of the other two. Hence, the probability of the targeted event is simply the sum of the probability of these three events. Hence, the probability of the targeted event is simply the sum of the probability of these three events. To compute the probability of these three events, we can integrate the joint density function over the proper regions. So let's recall the joint density function for these three variables, which are independent and uniformly distributed over the interval zero to one is simply given by one when we're in the cube given by the Cartesian product of the same interval from zero to one and zero anywhere else. Therefore, the probability for capital X1 greater than the sum of capital X2 and 3 is given simply by the integral of the joint density function over the given region. Suppose we are integrating this function in the order from X1 to X2 to X3 then the integration limit of the first integral should be better from x2 plus x3 to 1 because we want x sub 1 to be greater than the sum of these two guys but we'd better not getting beyond 1 otherwise you end up with 0 as the value of the joint density function on the other hand for the second integral, x2 could be anywhere between 0 and 1 minus x sub 3, because we don't want the sum of x2 and x3 to exceed 1. Otherwise, you will have your joint density function equal to 0. Lastly, for the third integral, x sub 3 could be anywhere between 0 and 1. There is basically no restriction on the third variable. Through computation, the outcome is just one sixth. The probability of the other two events could be computed in a similar way, but it can also be obtained by noting that these three probability is supposed to be equal to each other by symmetry. Hence, all three of them are equal to one sixth. Consequently, the targeted probability is just the sum of one sixth, one sixth, and one sixth. 
which is equals to one half, consistent with the result from our first approach. This completes our second approach, and we are done with this problem.